topic on physics topic is a uh, laser system and uh, application uh, welcome i am dr sanjay kumar misra professor working uh, in school of basic and applied sciences sanskrit university today i will discuss what is the laser and its application in brief right okay uh, the word laser is an acronym for the light amplification for stimulated emission of radiation uh, it is possible that we can get the uh, strong highly intense highly monochromatic uh, unidirectional and uh, the highly coherent beam of laser light and uh, in this a principle that is the stimulated emission is involved and firstly uh, predicted by Einstein in the year of 1917. In the laser, uh, there should be many excited state. We know the atom remains in its lower energy state. I am discussing here, suppose there are two transition state. Here the lower energy state and this is the higher energy state. And suppose a single atom which is initially at uh, lower energy state, uh, when the light energy or you can say a photon having the energy H nu is incident on this atom, the li light energy is absorbed by this atom and this atom goes into its higher energy state and uh, this phenomena is known as absorption. Einstein shows uh, the when the atom reaches uh, in its uh, excited state uh, and when an additional photon having the same energy H nu interacts with its higher energy state atom then there is the emission of photon and both the photon one emitted from this atom when it reaches into its ground state and the incident atom when it's come into the same phase then we get the enhanced beam of energy and that is the laser right now we will discuss the what is the emission and uh, what is the absorption then we can understand what is the laser and how it is obtained right and now these days we cannot ignore the laser light okay the full form of laser is light amplification for stimulated emission of radiation first i will discuss what is the absorption suppose there are the two energy state this is the lower energy state and this is the higher energy state and the atom is initially at its lower energy state and uh, a photon having energy uh, h nu is incident on this atom and after absorbing the energy from this photon this atom goes into his higher energy state we know uh, or you must know it is the property of any atom or molecule or anion or cation it remains in its higher energy state uh, up to 10 to the power minus 8 second and it is the property of any atom electron ion anion it remains only in excited state up to 10 to the power minus 8 second and spontaneously without applying an incident photon it comes into its lower energy state then there is the emission of electromagnetic radiation and this is called the emission but it is due to the spontaneously without applying the external incident photon so this is called spontaneous emission but Einstein uh, shown when and suppose an additional photon having the same energy in uh, it uh, you can say it uh, interacts with its higher energy state then there is the emission of the photon from this atom which is absorbed by the atom and the addition energy of additional photon when they come out or there is emission when they become they in the same phase 
then we get the enhanced beam of energy electromagnetic radiation and that is the laser okay so this is the principle involved in the lasing action but there is also essential condition that there should be population inversion generally the atoms uh, remains in its lower energy state and uh, in excited state there are no atoms or less atom so uh, for the lasing action there is essential condition that there should be the population inversion population inversion is the process by which we increase the number of atoms larger in the excited state and it is possible by pumping system there are many methods to pump the atoms for example uh, the optical pumping uh, the inelastic atom atom collision electrical pumping and chemical pumping and others pumping right so there is essential condition for the lasing action there should be population inversion population inversion it means the number of atoms should be larger at the higher energy state and uh, there should be also an component and this component is called the optical resonator optical resonator what is the optical resonator optical resonator is an optical device uh, in which there are two opposing parallel mirror and the active materials is capped between these two mirror and when the light is amplified the there is the multiple reflection of the stimulated emission and when the energy is increased the one mirror is the partly silvered and the other mirror is completely silvered it means 100% reflecting when the energy is increased the energy is liberated through the partly transparent uh, uh, mirror and that is called window so the optical resonator is the essential component for the lasing action next this is the process for the emission process emission process uh, the emission of photons and there is the characteristics for the spontaneous emission that the emitted emitted photons of energy having energy h nu can move in any random direction and the second characteristics is the there is no phase relationship between the photons emitted from the various atom of the system and uh, next uh, this is the diagram for the stimulated emission when the photons are emitted through the partly silvered mirror all the photons they are remains in the same phase right and the direction is not at random they are all in the direction and they maintain the phase relationship so we get the enhanced beam of energy and that is the laser okay next uh, there are many types of laser but uh, in brief i will discuss uh, the first laser discovered by t h memon in the year of 1960 so sometime it is called memon's laser t h memon was the scientist american scientist uh, he firstly discovered the laser using a rod and that rod is that crystal is called ruby crystal the chemical formula of ruby crystal is uh, uh, al2o3 and uh, in this crystal uh, there is a doping of uh, chromium oxide of the weight 0.05% and uh, the chromium ion is responsible for the lasing action in ruby laser it is called ruby laser because in this laser which is firstly uh, invented by t h memon ruby laser also and it is the first laser and because the ruby 
crystal is solid so sometimes it is called solid state laser in this laser there are mainly three component first is the ruby crystal the formula is aluminum oxide second component is the optical resonant and uh, the third component is the optical pumping optical pumping is also an essential condition this is the structure of the ruby crystal the ruby crystal is inserted inside a helical xenon flash lamp in this flash lamp the xenon gas is filled and when the xenon flash lamp is switched on there is emission of photon and this photon absorbed by the chromium ion in ruby crystal when we add the chromium oxide the chromium the aluminium ion are replaced by the chromium ion and cr plus 3 ions are responsible for the lasing action and so the color is red the color of ruby laser is red okay when we switch on the flash lamp there is emission of photon and this photon is absorbed by the chromium ion and after absorbing the chromium ion by the chromium ion the chromium ion goes into its higher energy state that is e3 and uh, due to the spontaneous emission the chromium ion comes into its the lower energy state that is the not the ground state the second energy state and the second energy state that is the energy e2 is more populated it means the population inversion is achieved right and already i have told the for the lasing action the population inversion is the essential condition and there is transition from energy state 2 to energy state 1 and uh, because the energy state 2 is the more populated and this is the also known as the meta stable state meta stable state is the state where the additional photon interacts with the ion or atom and time period is increased and uh, time period of meta stable state is 10 to the power minus 3 second and when the transition between this energy state e2 to e1 there is the stimulated emission and we get the enhanced beam of energy and it is due to the ruby crystal so this is called ruby laser and uh, the ruby laser the color of ruby laser is red and uh, we must know the wavelength of ruby laser is 6943 angstrom okay next this is the energy level diagram of ruby laser next this is the three level laser system ruby laser sometimes is also known as the three level laser system there are three energy state this is the ground state this is the highly excited level and this is the meta stable state and this is the uh, population inversion between energy state 2 and energy state 1 initially excited state to the soft light high energy state then quickly decay to the uh, intermediate meta stable state and where the chromium ion stay up to 10 to the power minus 3 second and when the chromium ion reaches to its lower energy state uh, there is the transition and uh, there is the stimulated emission and we get the laser light but we must know there is four level energy system also but this is the demerit of ruby laser in ruby laser we get the beam in the form of pulsed in the next year it means in the year of 1961 uh, ali zawan and co worker developed a new laser and that laser is called helium neon laser helium neon laser laser is a gaseous laser and in this laser not ruby crystal is used in this the atoms or you can say uh 
particles that is the helium and neon and helium and we know the helium and neon are the inert gas right but it participate for the lasing action but in this case we not use the optical pumping we use the other electrical pump method which excite the helium and neon atom but in helium neon atom the there is no three energy state there is the four energy state and this is the energy level diagram of four level laser system in four level, level system when the atoms or ions when it uh, remain in ground state there is pumping and it reaches uh, into its highly excited level and from there it reaches into this third energy state and there is the transition uh, this energy state the meta stable state and uh, more populated and there is transition of uh, atoms and there is stimulated emission occurs so in the four level system there is the lasing action when the atoms or ion or any molecules comes from energy state 3 to energy state 2 and this is the natural deposition when the atoms reaches at this energy state 2 rapidly reaches into its lower energy state and so using four level energy state also we can obtain the lasing action helium neon laser is the example of the four level laser system whereas the ruby laser is the three level system but this four level system in this four level system when helium neon laser is used in a discharge tube we will discuss in my next lecture just this is the brief idea about the laser and energy level system and uh, what are the types of laser brief idea i'm discussing i will discuss in my next lecture in detail how the ruby laser works how the helium neon laser works how the atoms or anions ions reaches at highly excited state and how the stimulated emission occurs i will discuss in my next lecture right okay next slide just i want to say we must know the four level laser system is more efficient than the three level system because in four level system the energy is required for pumping is less and in helium neon laser uh, which is the four level system the beam we obtain we obtain the laser beam this beam is continuous beam not in the form of pulse so we can say the four level system is better to the than the three level system so now these days the four level laser system is used but we cannot ignore the ruby laser also this is about the four level system next now we will discuss in brief uh, what are the application of laser we cannot ignore the laser now these days the lasers have varieties of application in almost every field including fundamental research some of the common applications of lasers are as follows first is lasers are used for welding yes we cannot ignore the laser lasers are used for welding uh, for for you can say uh, welding the metallic rod yes in metallic process there are three methods metal cutting drilling and welding all this process can be done using the laser a thick metal you can cut without touching any instrument using the laser so we cannot ignore the laser so you can say lasers are used for welding second point is laser beam is used to vaporize unwanted material yes when we manufacture the electronic circuit on the semiconductor surface we use the laser beam because the unwanted materials there is unwanted material during the uh, manufacture of the 
uh, electronic circuit on the semiconductor surfa surface, the laser is used. Without laser, it is not possible to vaporize unwanted material. So this is the also very important application of laser. Next, some lasers are helpful in surgery. Yes. Now these days, we cannot ignore the laser in medical science also. Lasers are used, uh, is helpful in surgery because using the laser light, laser can block the blood vessel. Without laser, it is not possible. Now the technology has become very advanced in the medical science due to the laser. Next is lasers are used in defense. Yes, using laser, we can detect and destroy the missiles of the enemy. Uh, we know uh, during the Ronald Reagan in Star War, CO2 laser was used. CO2 is a type of gaseous laser and you will be very surprised to know the CO2 laser was developed by an Indian scientist in the year of 1965 and the name of that scientist was Kumar Patel. He is from Gujarat, India. He developed CO2 laser and during the Star War, the CO2 laser was used to detect and destroy the missiles, weapons of the enemy. So, CO2 laser is also used and you are very surprised to know, now these days, CO2 laser is used to, uh, to cure the cancer in here, right. Next, some lasers are used in CD players. Yes, some lasers are used in CD players. Some lasers are used in uh, photocopier. Some lasers are used in laser printer. So it is very, very important application. Next, laser are used in optical fiber communication. Yes, now these days we cannot ignore the optical fiber. Optical fiber is a um, thread like very thin of the order of 5 micrometer diam uh, diameter and it is it, uh, optical fiber is made of plastic tra or a transparent material like silica right and we can send the light from one point to another and in this Phenomena, a very important phenomena is involved that is called total internal reflection of light. And to send the light signal through the optical fiber from one point to another point, the laser light is used. And this light signal is converted into digital form. Now this day, we cannot ignore the optical fiber also. And optical fiber, in optical fiber, the laser light is used. Because laser light is highly coherent, uh, it hardly diverges, and uh, it is highly monochromatic, highly bright. And you must know, light, uh, uh, laser light is uh, also uh, lies in invisible range also, right? Okay. Next, laser are used in holography. Yes, now these days we cannot ignore the holography. We are familiar with holography. What is holography? Uh, holography, actually holographic, uh, holography uh, phenomena was developed by a Hungarian scientist and the name of that scientist uh, is uh, uh, Dennis Gabor, he developed the, this technology uh, in the year of 1947, but he got the Nobel Prize. Dennis Gabor is from uh, uh, Hungary uh, in the year of 1971 due to the discovery of the holography. And in this holography, the laser light is used. Holography in holography, the image of any object is captured in a holographic plate. And this image you can say see in three dimensional. That there is the formation of the virtual and real image. And the 
in the holography there are two process that is called the construction of hologram and the reconstruction of hologram uh, in currency note there is hologram and all the information in that hologram and using the laser light we can get the detail information and so the laser light is used in hologram laser beams have also been used in the internal confinement of plasma and it is very important application this is about the what is the laser what is the principle of lasing action i discussed only what is the first laser that is the ruby laser we must know and uh, the application of laser in brief this is about laser in my next lecture i will discuss how the ruby laser is constructed and what is the working principle and the energy level diagram and application of laser in detail thank you